turn the camera around so you can actually see me. Okay, all right. Can you hear me? Oh, good. I see myself. I see myself. What is wrong? Oh uh, yeah, the laptop battery is just having some problems. So I will just let it, let it charge for a bit. Never had that happen before. Hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna, I only got one camera now, so I'm just gonna have to hold up. Not quite as cool. Thanks. <laughs> wow, that battery ran down fast. What used up all the battery, I wonder? Oh, that's very kind of you. So someone was asking me something before. Lane Me Knitting Machine was saying, um, what am I working on? Or no, Alizara said that. So what am I working on? So this is the Orkney. If you missed the screenshot, I'll hold it up. Um, so that's the body. So I finished that yesterday. Uh, I did a three needle cast off for the shoulders. I mean, it's still got a gazillion ends to weave in on the inside, so I've got to do that. But I'm um, doing a, a short sleeve now to see what it looks like on there. Um, and so if I don't like the short sleeve, I'll pull it off and I'll make it just a vest. Thanks. Yeah, it's um, gorgeous colors, the Rowan. Rowan felted tweed. <laughs> It was actually kind of weird. I bought, because the original wool I bought back in Sydney, Australia, uh, like eight years ago. And so I'm running low on a couple of the colors. And so I actually bought a few balls online this week, just in case I decided I wanted to do the long sleeves. I figured I might be running out. And some of the dye lots are really different, you know. And we always tell people like, you should all get all the wool from the same dye lot because it can vary. But uh, I'll show you this one because it's really, really start startling. Um, where's the actual ball? There it is. No. So that's the original color. So this sort of tealy green color. And there it is. So that's the original color that I have. And that is the new one. Can you see the difference in those two colors? Like it's actually really startling. Um, the old one looks more green and the new one looks more blue. And it's the same exact color number. It's just that um, the dye lot, you know, is, is that big of a variation. So if I were doing a single color jumper, it would be, it would suck. But because, <laughs> because I'm doing this <laughs> and there's no real sort of large areas of color, it should be fine. Like it's not gonna, you won't notice um, if, if I have it next to each other. So it's not gonna make a difference. But man, when I pulled it out of the box yesterday, I was like, what? So you're doing socks in self-striping yarn. Oh, cool, yeah. I like doing socks. Normally I do socks on two circulars because um, I like, well, that's just the way I learned. I mean, I can do magic loop as well, but I like doing um, both at the same time. I get very bored <laughs> if I have to do another sock exactly the same as the first one. But yeah, self-striping, a good self-striping, I like a lot. But the Rowan colors are great. Like they all look good together. So 
That's, and, and I'm following the pattern. Like I, I think there was only one color that I substituted because when I originally bought the wool, they didn't have the exact one. Um, but that's basically as written pretty much in the pattern. I'm worried though, this is all I've got left of the gray and I'm gonna need more of it to do, to, if I'm gonna do around the neckline, I'm gonna need more of it, I think. And um, every shop I check here, in Germany, everyone's been out of stock and has no idea when they're gonna get it, presumably because maybe Brexit is screwing up Rowan shipping. So I've got a friend back in Sydney who's got a ball, shout outs to Donna, but I feel stupid how sending a single ball of wool halfway around the world. I ought to be able to find one here somewhere. I can see on this thing where all the battery has gone. Battery health. Battery condition normal. Well, and I'm plugged in, so I don't know why it's running down when I'm plugged in to power. Hmm. Yarn shops are all out of some of the interchangeable needles. That, well, it could be, yeah, I guess. Um, but you know, I was able to get the other colors. So I don't know why this one particular, the gray is, is, is I mean, it might be that it's a discontinued color. So I'm just trying to find stocks, that's, stores that still have some stock. Yeah, knitting two socks at the same time is, otherwise my second sock would always end up shorter because I get bored and I would make it <laughs> shorter. Maybe it's that port that I've got the power plugged into. Let me plug it into the other one. See if it charges any faster. I've heard that some of the MacBooks have the USB-C ports have issues. Maybe mine's got issues. Luckily, I, I did ship my interchangeable needles from Australia, so I've got all the needle sizes really that I need. Um, how, how, long, how long a cuff should I do? Let's do, a, let's do another couple of rows. How many have I done of the gray? One, two, three, four. Maybe I'll... I've got to, whatever I end up doing, I gotta make sure I do the other one to match. One, two, three, four. Hang on, is that right? One, two, three, four. I think I'm doing six, actually, six.
Oh, look, I've got a knot coming up. This is because when I reclaimed the wool from the old sweater, I had to do a bunch of joins. Do you prefer a needle of a certain, a certain machine? Uh... Yeah, it depends for me. The, the needle material uh, varies depending on the wool. Like, um, I do like the Addy Turbos, which are the ones, the Addy Interchangeables I've got. Like, I like the slick, slick stainless, um, but it depends a lot on the wool. Like, this wool is kind of grabby. Like, I feel like on bamboo, it would be really sticking to the wood, you know? It really wants to grab onto the wood um, versus on this metal, it, it sort of slides along nicely. So that can that can make a difference. Yeah, these are the Addy Clicks that I'm using. They're great until the ends pop off when you're halfway around a row and you drop like 500 stitches. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna join, yeah. I have to join in some more gray here because of that knot. It doesn't help. It means I have extra ends to weave in <laughs> whenever I have to join in because of a knot. And I lose like eight inches because of the tails. And whenever I join in a new ball, I just tie the ends together in a bow to keep them out of the way. And then later I'll go back and weave those in. Just to keep them out of the way. Yeah, I have I originally was using the tulip bamboo and have quite a lot of the bamboo ones. Um, but you know, you can eventually, like I think a couple of them I've chipped the tips and I've heard people say you get some sandpaper and you can sand them down. But I, I like the, um, the Addies, the, they're just the right level of pointiness that I like. <laughs> And also I think depends on the project as well, like for straight knitting, you know, I might prefer something else. I was doing some Cookie A socks. Cookie A as a designer is mental. Like she has you do some crazy things. And so I was doing these sort of really heavily cabled like kilt socks of hers called, uh, what were they called? Was it called Rhiannon? Something like that. And you had to do like a, it was something ridiculous like Pearl 3 through the back loop. You were basically doing a cable and an increase at the same time. And I actually was worried with a metal, with a wooden needle, I was going to snap the needle. Um, I actually, you know, some, sometimes if you're doing uh, quite a heavy duty cable, you might actually need the metal because from a pure strength standpoint. But I've heard also as well, like, and I used to advise people, like if you have arthritis or something, you know, the wooden ones are meant to be a little easier on your hands, you know, because they do give a little bit more natural materials than the metal ones. Oh, so what I was starting to say when the stupid laptop died um, was, yeah, my sweater shaver. There he is. He's a beast. It's huge. Um, and yeah, it made me feel 
in control of my life. So if the pandemic is getting you down, buy a giant ass sweater saver and uh, go to work on your knitwear. And it just gave me a feeling of control in a world full of chaos. And so much nicer to use than those crappy little plastic ones. You once tried to put 1,500 stitches of bulky yarn on a 150 centimeter circular needle. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and when I was knitting Lanatus, that four ply teal and white jump row showing before, um, I had one of the Eddie Click pop off and that dropped about sort of, you know, 50 stitches that I had to then frantically try and rescue, which I did, but it happened on stream too. <laughs> it was pretty scary. I've also got a set I brought with me. Um, the first circulars, interchangeable circulars I owned were the Denise. I don't know if they had those in Europe, um, if people are familiar with them. I got, I got this set in Australia. But Denise interchangeable needles. Um, but they're, oh, it's old, old and dusty. Um, but they're plastic and they've got plastic cables. So they're, they're not too bad. Like they were good to use like when I started out and the plastic's fine, but um, the cables are kind of very thick and almost like a bit sticky. Not not as nice as the sort of plastic or nylon cables. See you, fuzzy loops. Go to bed. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice. I've got you know, so I've got those. I've got some fixed circulars, and I've got the the Addy Click. So I've got a good sort of selection of them. You know, you can have three or four pro pro projects going and not worry that you won't have the right needle size. Yeah, ruffles, ruffles are the worst. Um, I knitted uh, one of the knitty.com patterns many years ago. It's called Cheesy Love, and it's um, appropriate for Valentine's Day. It's a sort of a ribbed, ribbed vest with a ruffle at the bottom edge. And you know, it's like, start by casting on like 500 stitches. And you're just like, no. And then you like, you know, immediately knit two together the whole way around. And then next row, knit two together the whole way around. And yeah. Um, I'll never knit another ruffled thing in my life. Oh, how's that looking in terms of length? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more. One more. And then I'll start the pattern. So basically for the sleeves, and then you just start, start the ferrule. And so the interesting thing about this particular pattern is the sleeves, it uses the same, like the same motifs as the body, 
but it uses, it switches the colors around. So they don't match. The body is different colors than what's on the sleeves. Um, and obviously I'm not gonna do the full long sleeve. I'm just gonna do a couple motifs at the top, but I'm kind of intrigued to see what it looks like having the sleeves be done in different colors. Maybe it'll be ugly, I don't know. Never made a sweater, oh. Well, if you're doing socks, knit a top-down sweater in the round, it'll be easy, it'll be easy for you. And, um, you know, sweaters knitting flat and sewing up is, is just for chumps. You know, it's hard to get a really nice finish unless you're very good at, at sewing and seaming and Knitting it in the round, you just avoid all of that problem. Yeah, exactly. Get all the wool at the same time. Or, I mean, look, if you're doing gonna do something like this, you know, the dye lot, dye lot doesn't matter so much. Yes, but well, our sweater in the round is easy because you know circular knitting, you know, increasing, decreasing, um, picking up stitches along the edges of your heel gussets, uh, you know, you may have even done some short rows with your socks. Yeah, do, do a jumper in the round. No, it's not daunting. It's just a matter of scale. It's the exact same techniques. Exact same techniques. I mean, look, this is basically, this could be a sock what I'm doing here. I'm just knitting in the round. <laughs> Um, I, I did my first sweater in the round. I bought a book called um, The Sweater Workshop by Jacqueline Fee, which is shows you how to make seam-free sweaters in the round um, using sort of, there's a, a famous sort of system Elizabeth Zimmerman came up with, and this book is sort of based on it. But if you want to design your own, so basically it's like a little worksheet where you measure around the chest that you want, you plug in your like, the tension from your swatch and it spits out, okay, you should cast on this many stitches for the waist, this many stitches for the sleeves, all based on ratios. Um, so if you wanna like design your own, it's super handy for that. Sweater Workshop by Jacqueline Fee. And so I made a couple from that. I designed a couple from that, um, which are very simple. And you can do waist up, bottom up, um, and do like a raglan sleeve line at the top. That's a very common one. Um, or you can do like a yoked decreases. But then top down is great because you can try it on as you go. So that Lanatus I knitted, the teal and the white, that was done top down. You run down in two hours, computer. I don't understand. And granted, streaming takes a lot of energy, but it was plugged, it's plugged into the wall. Something's gotta be wrong. Yeah, I was saying yesterday that when I was doing the three needle cast off on the shoulders, the problem with most commercially printed sweater patterns, and you'll see this when you go looking at them, is they're written, A, they're written for idiots, and B, they're written to save space. So they will tell you to do things in a way that doesn't make the nicest garment, but it's, you know, shorter to write out. So like for doing shoulders, it'll tell you to cast off your shoulders and then sew them together. That's actually not as nice as doing a short row shaping for your shoulders and then using a three needle cast off. But that's like slightly more advanced technique and would take a little bit more, you know, space to write out so they don't bother. They do it like the dumbest way possible. 
Um, so if you look at yesterday's stream, I recommended an article on Nitty.com, uh, which talks about converting uh, sweater shaping for short rows. And that's what I did on, on the Orkney here. Because a, a three needle cast off for the shoulders is just so much nicer than doing, than sewing it up after. Okay, you know what? That's looking pretty good. Let's get back to the beginning of the round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's fine. We can start the chart. Question is, what point do I start at hat? So look at this. This looks like an eye chart. It's ridiculous. Obviously though, I mean, I can do whichever motifs I want. I'm changing the pattern. Um, so I've kind of basically eyeballed it and eyeballed the garment because I don't want to make it the same. I want to choose a different part of the motif. So I'm thinking sort of this bit here, I'll do at the top of the shoulder in different colors. So if I do it right next to it, it's gonna look like a mistake. <laughs> okay, and should I do before I divide? Ah, that's what I need to work out. One thing I need to work out is my row gauge. Let me just quickly measure this. I have a feeling my row gauge is a lot tighter than what the pattern's written for, which means that basically the shaping for the shoulder if I knit it as written, my shoulder will probably end up being squinched up shorter than, than what I need for the armhole. And so I'm thinking I will probably have to do some adjustments here. So what's my row gauge? My row gauge is, let's just sort of measure here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Mine's about seven stitches per the, seven rows to the inch. Um, and the pattern specifies, so that would be 28 rows to 10 centimeters. Huh, no, the pattern says 29. So I'm okay, it's close enough. It's close enough. I can, I can follow the shaping. Okay, I was worried about that. All right, that's good. I don't have to worry about jiggering it. Excellent. Okay. Well, if I look at the height of the armhole then, how many motifs does that take into account? Good Lord, quite a lot. Like, quite a lot. This is where I've got to sort of, you found the book? Oh, cool, yeah. Um, sorry, yeah, <laughs> because I'm on my phone, <laughs> it's tricky. You found it, good, all right. I, otherwise, I can send it to you later. I can DM it to you. Um, the Nitty article, uh, hang on, I can open Twitch. On my computer it's, it's charging I think I can find it for you yeah so nitty yeah so here's the nitty pattern I'll put that in um, so there's the nitty pattern for shoulder shaping so that's the one that will show you how to convert your sweater to short rows and then for anyone else, um, sweater workshop, Jack Cohen fee. Knit Creative, yeah, it's a great book. Um, this Jacqueline Fee book, that's it. And the interesting thing, it has you knit, do I actually have it with me? I don't know it with me. I left it back in Australia. Um, she has a little project in there you call, she calls like a sweater sampler, where you basically knit this weird tube, um, but it's like a practice thing where it's got all the different techniques you would need to make a full size sweater. So maybe that would be great for you if you're worried about jump, the jump to the full sweater is make the sweater sampler from that book because you will practice all the techniques you'll need, mirrored decreases and increases and, and hems and all of that stuff. 
Um, and I mean, you can't really use the thing for anything at the end. It's just kind of this weird, I always think of it like in the Lorax, you know, it's a thneed, it's this weird thing. Um, but it made me feel a lot more confident before I moved to making, making the full size sweater. All right, so, wow. So this covered quite a few rows, the armhole that I did. Um, that's my, my worry is I make a sleeve and it doesn't fit in the armhole. I guess I just make it taller than, oh, looking, what does the pattern actually say? Continue straight until sleeve measures. Then you, then you start casting off nine stitches at the beginning of the next two rows, then each of the next five rows. Right, because that's the underarm right there. The first casting off on the sleeve is for the underarm. So basically I start from there, from that. And so how many rows would that be? Um, so one, two, seven. Eh, it's quite a number of rows. I'm just trying to work out where I start the sleeve. At what point down do I start it? I mean, if I start it too low, it will just repeat, but. So I actually want that bit to be up near the top. Yeah, maybe I'll start it start it there oh but that's x and that's gray i don't want that no i don't want gray <laughs> try and pick patterns that avoid the gray since i'm so low on it um okay well, i could just substitute another color instead of using the gray colors is it it's the ginger and why don't I use like the brown or something yeah why don't I use that I'm just gonna I'm gonna play around with the colors a little bit My husband checks in, he's gonna be like, what's wrong with your stream? Okay, we'll start the pattern. Yay! I need to do one more little bit to get to the start of the round. Okay, that's the start of the round. making some easily I'm gonna make this up as I go I might end up pulling it apart you never know all right so if I'm gonna do that so I'm done with the camel and the gray so I can actually break those off done with those Break those. And I'm gonna use the ginger, which is the reddish color, and the dark 
brown. Yeah, let's use those. Why not? Okay. Yeah, I'm not using gray, that's for sure. I'm gonna do a row of the dark brown. Apparently, my Knitters Guild group back in Australia actually had an in-person meeting yesterday. They are able to, in Sydney, because transmission rates are so low, they actually had their first in-person meeting in a year. That would be nice. Once you get, you know, some stitches on these circular needles, you don't have to fight with it quite as much as you do that first few rows. Oh, actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll tie my ends together where I joined the brown onto the cream and the gray. I'll just tie those, I'm just tying the tails together into a sort of a loose bow just to keep them out of my way. And then later I'll undo that and weave in those ends. Okay. It's kind of hard to avoid when you do Fair Isle to have a bunch of ends. So, Chem Man. Hey, Chem Man. Started a new job in September. A couple people in the company that knit stitch, a stitch and complain. Oh, nice. Or, uh, yeah, an S and I miss an S and B, man. Fun S and Bs. I remember I worked in a big bank in Sydney and I thought, oh, well, I'll knit at lunchtime in the, in the area and find some knitting friends. No, there were none. I just looked like a weirdo. Uh, it was that type of a place. It's funny how the corrugated ribbing just kind of like ends straight into the pattern. Kind of wish it had a more elegant transition. My mom runs a quilting shop back in Indiana and she runs what she calls a, a sit and stitch, or she used to before COVID. I'm like, mom, it's a stitch and bitch. No, it's a sit and stitch. We don't say that. What are you knitting, Kim, man? Okay, there's the first row of brown. And so now I'm gonna bring in the red. And I'm gonna have two colors going at once. So I'm gonna have the red going in my left hand and the brown going in my right hand. For 
extra fun. So normally you'd have a stitch marker to mark the start and end of the row. I'm actually using the fact that my tails are hanging there. I know that's where I cast on. So that's the start and end of my round. One, two, three in the brown. And then join in the red. So I'm thinking I'll do one motif in the round and then I'll switch to going back and forth for the, um, for the sleeve cap. Just making this up. Before that job, you were meeting up at the local library for a knitting group on Tuesday afternoons at 1.30. Yeah. Shocked that you knit, oh, you knit continental style, nice. Yeah, the idea of running knitting classes, you know, in the evenings or on the weekends when working people could actually attend was quite revelatory <laughs> in, uh, in, the, in the guild. Now we have the people in charge are um, from a younger generation and are a little bit more savvy when it comes to some of that stuff. All right, so I'm doing, well, I'm knitting continental here because I've got the red yarn in my, I turn this way, maybe you can see. So the red yarn's in my left hand and I'm using that continental style. And, um, and this is flipped mirrored because it's the iPhone. So this is actually my right hand as I'm looking at it. So I'm telling you all the wrong hands, but yeah. So I've got, I'm knitting continental with the red and throwing with the brown. Finished a three color plaid beanie for your nephew. Oh, nice. You cast on a shawl. See, I don't, I don't knit shawls. Well, it's more like I don't wear shawls. And so I can't be arsed to knitting something that I'm not gonna wear. I've knitted a couple, one or two triangular scarves. I refuse to call them shawls. They were triangular scarves, but yeah, there's this huge sort of trendiness of shawls and shawlettes and uh, haps and Estonian haps and oh my my shawlette has so many nups and no I don't I don't go in for lace shawls or cable or any really any shawls I'm 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 anti shawl but more power to you some of them are gorgeous there's a lot of work in them I just it's not really something I'd ever wear. So this was my New Year's resolution to deal with Orkney. So once that's done, then I can start on an actual new project. Um, my husband hasn't had a new, new sweater in a while. Maybe he'll get one. So the trick on here uh, when I'm doing this with the magic loop is making sure my, my tension, my float tension isn't too loose or too tight when I switch between the needles. It's gonna be tricky. Next week, I'll be back to my normal setup. I'll sort out my laptop battery issues. Normally I have a camera I'll point it at my face and one down at my hand, so you can actually see better what I'm doing. So apologies, ran into some technical difficulties today, so you're only getting the iPhone view.
Okay. So I know these patterns are not gonna evenly fit around the sleeve, that is okay. Because the join will be on the underside of the arm, so I don't really care. You're project driven. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I 100% agree. Like, I don't think, you know, I don't like the idea that you have to, like, graduate up to, to doing various projects, you know? Um, I remember once we had our, our Stitch and Bitch group back in Sydney, um, and we did have a bloke turn up, uh, a guy turned up some night, and was like, I think he was in the Navy. And he was like, look, I don't knit, but I made a bet that I would knit a pair of socks in a month. So can someone teach me how to knit a pair of socks in a month? And... It helped that he was kind of handsome and hunky. So, of course, he had a lot of women uh, volunteering to help him learn to knit a pair of socks. But, yeah, we we helped him knit a pair of socks. <laughs> and I think he won the bet, if I recall correctly. All right. Uh, so these... Right, okay, just make sure I know where I'm starting the pattern here. So, red. What do you call unmarried stitch? A single crochet. But don't. Shh. Really? Really? We're gonna do puns now, fanfish, fanfisher. <laughs> Okay, I'm on to row two of the motif. So I'm doing sort of, um, almost looks like an infinity symbol, like a sort of waving rope back and forth. Yeah, I mean, it is funny, like the first, and we told him, like the first knitters pre-industrial revolution it was a manly art form. You know, it was a skilled artisan craft. Um, and so, yes, there were men. Sailors did do it. It really only sort of, my understanding is with the Industrial Revolution, when, uh, you know, knitting machines came into it, that uh, it became something that was seen as less prestigious. And so men stop doing it. And of course, you know, when they when they decide something is less prestigious, well, then it becomes a woman's thing. So disappointing. It's nice that so many guys are, are rediscovering it and getting back into it. I did see, however, I was on Reddit this morning. I don't normally read Reddit, but over breakfast, I was bored and I was scrolling it on my phone and the, the knitting subreddit, someone was complaining that like, a post on that sub knitted by a woman will get like 10 likes, but a guy makes a post and he'll get like a thousand. And it's like, because yeah, someone was sort of defending it going, well, you know, there's so few guys doing it that you, you want to sort of reward them for sort of stepping out of the gender norms. But then other people are like, yeah, but it's not amazing just because a dude did it. <laughs> I remember back in Australia, one, there was a local guy who started a knitting podcast. It was fine podcast. Um, but I just remember it got like a huge following, especially in the U.S. Because they're like, oh, he's got an Australian accent and he knits. <gasps> I think they all thought he looked like Hugh Jackman. I, I, I met him. He was and looked like a, you know, high school teacher. Like high school computer science teacher because that's what he was. <laughs> but it was always very cute that, that they had this very exotic idea of... Uh, of who David Reedy was based on based on his Australian accent and his knitting podcast. <laughs> Fan Fisher's off to deliver more bad pen jokes. Thanks, Fan Fisher. <laughs> nice to see you.
All right, the laptop is charging. I don't know why. I mean, I unplugged it for a while to plug the laptop, to plug my iPad in, and so it was running off the battery. And I guess it just got so low that it couldn't charge itself fast enough to keep up. Ooh, I hear a sound. And I think it's the mixer. I think it's the KitchenAid. I think I'm getting a cake for Valentine's Day. Lucky me. I mean, these short sleeves shouldn't take long to knit. And then I, I mean, I might just sort of baste it on and see what it looks like before I bother going ahead and sewing it in fully. Okay, there's two rows down. Yay, he's, uh, my husband's, I jokingly said to him the other day, you know, oh, so what are we gonna do for Valentine's Day? I mean, there's, there's nothing to do. We're under lockdown in Germany, everything's closed. But he was like, actually, I was thinking of making a cake. And I was like, I have no problem with this. So he, he got the, we had a bunch of pistachios left over for something. I don't know why he bought pistachios. And so I think he, he had a recipe. He's quite a good baker, actually, my partner. I think he's making um, a Persian love cake which I don't think is actually Persian in any sense of the world. I messaged an Iranian friend of mine and he was like, yeah, no, never heard of it. Um, but it's like a, a sort of semolina cake with almond flour and I think pistachios and uh, he's putting using orange blossom water and yogurt. Um, so it should be nice. Oh, you make a spice bread, nice. One, two... Is this the same pattern as on the body? Might be slightly different. I feel like it's slightly different. Or did I just knit it wrong on the body? No, I did it. I did it correctly. <laughs> just a momentary worry that I did it wrong. So the annoying part is when I switch to knitting in the flat. And I had this problem on the body as well. That's the one I divided at the armholes for the front and back. So normally when you knit fair isle, you, it's much easier to knit fair isle in the round because then you can just always knit. You don't have to worry about purling and juggling two colors at the same time. But because I divided for the armholes for the front and back, and then on the front again, I divided for the V-neck for each side, I was forced to purl. Uh, and so as I start going back and forth on the sleeve cap, I will do purl as well. Hold it up so you can see what I'm doing. So the one that I'm wearing, by the way, um, it's called Road to Golden. So I knitted this many years ago. It was from a magazine. Was it from like, it wasn't from Yarn Mag. Uh, it's on my Ravelry page. Uh, I can't remember. Um, I did, I changed the wool. I knitted this out of Feel the Tura de Crosa Zara and I couldn't get the exact colors that were in the pattern. So I, I subbed. Um, with a friend's help, but yeah, I, uh, I like Farrow making, yeah, zucchini bread. I love zucchini bread. It's funny in Australia, it was not like not well known and you know, it's a fairly common thing in America, but in Australia, nobody knew when I said I was going to make some zucchini bread. My husband was like, what? I like, guess. Yeah, it's the same thing as like pumpkin pie. It doesn't actually taste like the vegetable. It just 
is more for texture. Yeah, I definitely hear sounds coming from the kitchen. Something's happening. All right, so this is the middle row of the pattern. So by the way, if you're new to this, um, I leave my streams up on Twitch for two weeks and then I archive them over to my YouTube page. So if you wanna see the previous ones, like we wanna see, I mean, yesterday's will still be up, but if you wanna go back and see the ones I did when I was knitting Lanatus, or if you wanna see, I mean, I had a whole whole stream on a Sunday where I just wound at the Swift and the ball winder out, winding the reclaimed, these, these cakes from the wool. Hi, too cute, nice to meet you, welcome. Um, yeah, so when I frogged this whole jumper, I, I skeined it up, I washed the skeins in the bathtub because they were so dusty, they were giving me an allergy attack. Oh, and you're a jerk, so why don't you just go away? I'm just gonna block you because I don't need someone telling me that I'm chubby on my stream. Go away, that's not nice. Oh, yeah, you're a jerk. Go away. You can get banned. Gone. Fun. I don't get that many trolls. I've not actually had that many trolls. Only a few. Kind of surprising. Actually, it's probably a sign that my stream's getting more popular if I'm actually getting trolls now. I'll choose to see it. Choose to see it as a nice compliment, huh? All right. So what am I up to? Next row. All right. Make sure I haven't mucked up the pattern. No, I've not. <laughs> yeah. It's a compliment when you're, you know, getting enough people to take notice that a guy decides to tell you what he thinks of you. Lovely. Uh, red, black, red. Sounds like someone, oh, thanks. Sounds like someone who doesn't have anyone to knit them a jumper. Granted, this is not the most flattering angle. I will, I will say that. You know what I can do, actually, I can lower my chair at least so you're not looking up at me. Okay. I'll make sure to post a photo of the cake on my Instagram now. Oh look, it's another person, fun. Jerk. Can I make it so that people can't comment if they haven't been like a member for a while? Uh, followers only chat. Yeah, how about you guys follow me? Cause I'll, I'll turn on followers only chat. Followers can chat if they have followed for at least, well, I don't know if you guys are following me or not. I'm gonna make it 
Like I'll change it for now. And then someone's just having fun. What a fun person that is. All right. Are you really a woman on the internet if you've not had a man comment on your appearance? Oh, it's not been a good day of streaming between laptop issues and now and now assholes that's not fun let's see if I can you don't need to stare at my there we go. I got the window a little bit. Oh yes, we had people being rude. Thank you, that's very nice of you. I'll just keep an eye on them just in case. Thanks friends. Okay, so we've got the first half, first half of the, of the motif done. Oh, you're awesome, you guys, thank you. Oh, there we go. They're back. Fun, fun. Fun, fun. All right. And they did have to follow me, so I'm changing the follower chat. It's going to now be you have to follow me for 10 minutes. So, guess what? Sorry, you guys. That might cut a few of you off if you have not... If you have not followed me before, but that's what it's doing now. There we go. What a dick. I do hear my cake happening though, so I will probably sign off anyway. Go have some lunch and have some cake. Aw, thanks for the scroll. And you are all my Valentine, so thank you. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend. And I will see you all here next Sunday 
and hopefully next Sunday I'll have the camera issue sorted out and you'll be able to see um, see what it looks like with some sleeves on it. I should have some sleeves done next weekend so you'll be able to check it out. Thanks a lot for hanging around with me, you guys. It was really awesome um, and helping me deal with my first ever troll. So that was exciting, fun. All right, I will see you all later. Bye.